um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome to our session, Preschoolers as Mathematicians. Uh, my name is Shannon Olson, and I'm the Elementary Math Specialist at the State Board of Education. Um, so I'm responsible for the standards um, in like K-5, K-6, but then I also work really closely with preschool um, to work on the preschool standards and other supports, um, all things related to math. All right, just a couple um, virtual session expectations. If possible, I'd love for you to keep your video on, especially um, if you're speaking. I understand some of you might be eating lunch or have other things going on and that's not an option, um, but especially when we go into breakout groups and we're having a discussion, um, it's just a lot more engaging for participants if they are able to see um, the faces of their colleagues who they are interacting with. So if possible, please keep on your video. Um, and just a reminder to please stay on task and minimize distractions. You'll get more out of it the more you put into it. Um, please remember to keep yourself muted if you're not speaking and then to unmute when you are speaking. Um, and then also know that the chat box is available for comments and questions as well. We'll be doing a lot of responses in the Nearpod, um, but if we're having a conversation or a discussion, the chat box is an option as well. All right, so our goals for today um, are to examine preschool math instruction, to describe effective practices in preschool math instruction, and then um, at the very end we'll have an opportunity to make some connections to the new preschool math standards and preschool resources related to um, the instruction we get to see. So um, first, um, let's go ahead and start with like why did you choose to come to a math session? Why are you specifically in this conference and in this session? What are you hoping to gain related to um, math for preschoolers in today's session? I'll give you just a second. Um, if you're not familiar with Nearpod, um, there's a white box at the bottom that says share your thoughts or images. You just click right there and then you can type in whatever you'd like to share and then it'll show come up for everyone to see on the collaborative board. So we'll give you um, just a second to do that. All right, so it looks like a lot of us are just looking for a couple new ideas. Um, you're already doing a lot of things in your math instruction and you're just looking for a few new ideas or a few new suggestions. Um, some of you also talked about sometimes um, some of our teachers might not be as confident or like math as much and um, trying to find some ways that we can support them in that. So love all those reasons and I think um, those will be addressed as we go throughout our session today. All right, so we're gonna have an opportunity um, to watch a quick video of instruction. You do not need to click on the link. Um, I will play it from my screen. And what we're going to do is record teacher and student actions um, while we watch this video. So um, I also wanna be clear, we're going to watch two different videos today and neither one of them are we saying this is exactly how math instruction needs to happen. But just these are a couple examples that have some high quality um, practices that we'd love to see. So. I want you to just think of a couple things that you're noticing. Um, what are what is the teacher doing throughout the lesson, and then what are the students doing throughout that throughout the lesson? So if you are logged into the Nearpod, the window in your browser that has the Nearpod will have this document automatically there for you, and you should be able to type into it. Um, multiple participants can type in at once. So um, this will stay open on your Nearpod screen, and then on your Zoom screen. Um, is where you'll see the video that is being shared. So um, we'll go ahead and watch the video and during the video and, uh, and we can also take another minute after, I'd love for you to just record what are some actions you see in the teacher during math instruction and then what are some actions you see from the student. Oh. 
Okay, look, what did you see? What did you see? How can we solve? Okay, uh, Arisa? I think Caleb has to be medium and Joyce Ann has to be big. Okay, if we're going to do that, so where can we have Caroline to stand up? In the middle. Natalie needs to go more far away. Oh, okay. Can you ask Arisa? Okay, no, where you work? Oh, oh, you, oh, she needs to be okay. Now, what do you think? What do you see? But we're the same. <laughs> you are the same height. Caleb. So do we solve the problem? I think I have to be big. No. So if you okay, you, you, let's stand up, Arisa. They already big. They already big. Let's okay. See. So where would you see. stand up? Well, so who is going to sit? The 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 so Arisa, you measure yourself with who? With Okay, so then, are you taller than, are you bigger than, uh, Look. Okay, is she? I'm bigger. They're the same. Maybe. They're the same? You no. think they're the same? What do you I think? Just, I think Devin could be here, because he's big. Oh. oh. Devin, would you like to she's try? They want to see big. how, okay. Dude, he's more bigger than Jason. Okay, let's see. Oh. 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 oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my so, God. So, who's going to stay Devin for me? Devin is more bigger. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay, let's, let's, okay, who's going to sit down? Raise your hand, who's going to sit down? Oh, Addison and? Me. Joyce. So how many girls sit down? Two. Two, thank you, Joyce. Now let's see. Where would you stand up, Devin? There. Let's see. She's my baby. Okay. Are, are you agree? Are you okay now? Okay. Oh, yeah, he's my baby. Well, okay, then let's give it a big hand to the kids. All right, um, we'll just take another minute or so for you to record what you saw in the teacher actions and the student actions. All right, um, thanks for recording that evidence. Let's go ahead and just invite um, anybody who would like to either unmute or put in the chat box. What are some things overall that we noticed about that um, small example of math instruction in preschool? I think it was nice to see the whole class involved in what was happening. Great. Their social interaction was great. All right, so we see like a, um, <clears throat> an intersection between the social interaction along with the content. And then you see a couple ideas in the chat box that it was active, they were experimenting, they had to problem solve, they were using their bodies as a way to become fully engaged. Um, and then also the idea that it didn't necessarily take extra materials for them to be able to engage in that way. Interesting insights. Okay, all right. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at some effective teaching practices in preschool math. So um, these practices are an adaptation from principles to actions from the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. 
Um, it's a book that was published in 2014 and some practices that have been adopted and are really common in the K-12 space, um, looking at effective instruction. So we've taken those eight practices and modified them to fit more of like a pre-K language. Um, so I'd love for you to just take a second to look at these practices um, and then we'll go ahead and allow you to unmute or put in the chat box. Like, what do you notice about these practices um, that define high quality math instruction? Shannon, I'm trying to log on to the Nearpod on my phone, so I'm not switching on my computer. Can you tell me what the code is? Yes, it's 62MIJ. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll just give you a couple more seconds to look at these, look at these practices. Um, and then anybody who would like to unmute or add something to the chat box, what do we notice about these practices that define high quality math instruction? I love the term productive struggle as their problem solving. I think that's um, an interesting concept. Awesome. And then chat box, um, clear goals aligned with standards. Anything else that stands out to you? I like that they're, um, they're letting the students do the thinking and the problem solving, that use activities in which the students are doing the thinking and doing the solving, the problem solving. Great, awesome. All right, um, we're going to have an opportunity to watch another video and we're going to record evidence specific from these practices. So um, we're going to watch the video, record um, evidence. You're going to be assigned a breakout group, um, one through eight, and um, the number of your breakout room, break, breakout room is the number of the practice that you'll specifically be looking for in your observation. Um, so here's the video. I'll play it from my screen. You don't need to worry about clicking on it. Um, here's our evidence sheet that we're going to be looking at. So those same eight practices are listed here, um, but like room one will be looking for goals. Room two will be looking for students doing the thinking. Room three will be looking for the objects, pictures, drawings, symbols, um, like that. So in just a second, you're going to get an invitation on your um, Zoom to join a breakout group. Don't click join, just note what the number of the room is and then click later. And then I will share the video from my screen where we're all still here in a full group. And if you'll record evidence, um, you can do it in the sheet right now or keep track of it on your own and wait till you get to your breakout group to actually record. Um, but you're looking specifically at one of the eight practices um, and that um, practice will be aligned with the breakout room that you have. Um, while we watch the video, and then after the video, you're going to go to your breakout group, discuss what you saw aligned to that practice, record the evidence, and then we'll come back and debrief whole group. Do I have any questions about um, what we're doing with the breakout groups? Shannon, I did take a screenshot of what oh, I can see for perfect. the rooms and put it in the chat. So if you guys open that image, you can see which room you're assigned to. Um, I can also um, open them and hit later, but I don't know which one will look best. When I both? click on the download, I don't necessarily see the image right away. Is it, are you, the rest of you, are you able to see the image from the, the photo, so it has are? to open. Okay. Yeah. Okay, does so we'll just give, have... yeah, does anybody need to know which breakout group, like, is that working? If I don't hear from anybody, I'm going to assume it, it worked. <laughs> this is Joan, and I can't get it to work. So just tell me what room I'm in. You're in four. Thank you. Yep. OK. okay. Good. All right. Awesome. OK, we'll go ahead and sh I'll show the video um, from my Zoom. And then if you want to um, start recording that evidence. Can you tell Frandy which one she's in? <laughs> Fran is in. Frandy, yeah. No, three. Three, thank you. Okay. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. 
My name is Natalie Caxola. I'm a preschool teacher and I work at Felton State Preschool. Today's activity is counting collections. Throughout this activity, children are practicing counting skills that they've acquired or are acquiring and developing. You guys ready to go to counting collections? Yes, okay, go ahead and walk to your table, get your chair. In today's activity, my co-teacher, Nidia Muñiz, and I give children these little bags full of manipulatives. Each one has its own quantity, and the first task is to tell me how much you have in your collection. All right, Leo, can you count for me? It's one. So children take them out, organize them, and count them. How many do you have? Nine. Ms. Muñiz and I are observing the children, and based on what they're doing, we ask follow-up questions. Which of your group has the most? The purple, how do you know, has more? With counting collections, once you get started, it becomes a part of your routine that is the same yet different every time I do it because the kids don't get tired of it. Can you count yours again for me? If you can you give me two? No, I see. No, I count them. Okay, how many do you have left? One, two, three, four, five. So how many keys do you have? Five. Five. If I give you one more, how many do you have? Twelve. It's always a challenge because you have children that are acquiring very basic needs um, in regards to their math skills, and there's other children that have developed a much greater understanding of math, and they can be exactly the same age, and you're trying to make sure that you address all their needs. Can Sophie, I, uh, can you do me a favor? Can you come and work with Penelope? Can you help her count her collection? Yeah. One of the strategies I use is to help their peers and to model for their peers and they can support each other. So maybe you can give her a suggestion of how she can move them. And then, are you ready, Inan? All right, let's count together. Can you count with me? After that, we give them a piece of paper and we ask them to represent their collection. And on each paper, the goal is that the children show us how many objects they had in their collection now on paper. He said one, Six two, three, keys. four, five. But he said it like that. He counted really fast. Did he count accurately? What? Did he get the right answer? Can you double check? One, two, okay. Can you represent for me? Was Harith correct? Yes, he was. How many do you have? 12. Can you double check and make sure you have 12 tallies representing the 12 spoons? Do you have 12 on there? Okay. Oh, you traced each one, huh? So how many do you have on your paper? Two. Learning about counting collections really taught me to stop and observe and build on what each child has. And it's taught me that not all skills come in a certain order. I've learned that these skills are being acquired as they are learning. And all these skills come at different times and in different orders. So I don't limit the kids. I give them these objects and let me see what they can do. How many did you put? And the right here. Two, three, and then put. Okay, let's count together. Okay, ready? One. Looking at where I started in the year with the kids and where we are now, Penelope comes to mind. Penelope had a very difficult time keeping track of her collections and even counting by rote. And there's times where she still slips here and there with the number, but with a simple follow-up question, she can demonstrate she can count one to one. Can you count one by one? Seven, you had seven cubes. Thank you, Penelope.
she's come a long way. She's one of the younger kids in our class. So to see her develop that way is amazing. Yes. This is five and this is two. After they've represented, we ask more follow-up questions to make sure that the number is accurate. How did you represent them? Circles, okay. So how many circles do you have on your paper? One, two, three, I made my name. And of course, what the children produce varies. And the follow-up questions that we ask are based on what the children are doing and where each one is at. How can we check to make sure that you have the right amount from here to here? You did all of them? Between this one and this one, this group and this group, which one has more? Both of them. Both. Both. So that means they're 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 tied, right? It's the same amount, so they're equal. I've applied a lot of the things that I've learned through counting collections into my teaching, just in general. But I think that the biggest thing that I've taken away is that there is no limit, there is no place to stop. As long as I do it consistently and continue to ask follow-up questions, the kids are engaged. And if they're engaged in something, you get to learn so much from them. All right, um, you'll go ahead and get an invitation to your breakout group, and we'll have about like five to seven minutes for you to work with your group looking at your one practice that you're assigned to, record any evidence that you saw, discuss that practice, and then we'll see you back in about seven minutes to discuss whole group. All right, um, thanks for engaging in that activity. It was fun to be in the document and just see it being populated with all of these awesome ideas and evidence of the practices being implemented. Um, we will not take time for every group to share out. Um, I'll just give you a minute to kind of browse through the evidence and see like what other groups came up with. Is there anybody who would like to make a comment, like one thing that really stood out in your breakout discussion or something you see in the evidence sheet that you would like to comment on? Shannon, just to let you know, we just had the breakout rooms officially closed. So oh. as of now. Okay, I saw so many participants back, so I didn't realize. Um, great. So we, like I said, we will not take time for every group to go back and um, share, like report out, but we'll just give you a second to browse through the document and see the evidence that was recorded. Um, and then if anybody would like to add some details about something that stood out to you in your discussion or that you see in the document, we'll have just a second for anybody to comment who'd like to. So I liked in the video how the teacher redirected them to recount it without saying that they were wrong and so she even had another child come over to help them with their counting for those who also seem to struggle with it a little bit awesome so a way to like make sure that they're being accurate but without making the child feel like belittled or incorrect right love that okay any other things that really stood out to you I loved her scaffolding. I loved that she gave every child a bag that had different amounts and different items. It made everyone be super engaged and active and not like looking around and copying their neighbor or whatever. And it um, just kept them more engaged and, and really set it up to scaffold. Great. All right, any other ideas? All right, um, I'd love for us to just think um, like the video, like either video we saw or things you do in your own classroom. In what ways um, do we see the preschoolers acting as a mathematician? So how were they being mathematicians in the video? And then how, what are some other ways you could potentially see them being mathematicians in your classroom? So again, just the white box at the bottom, if you click, you should be able to type an idea. We'll just take a minute for you to respond to that question.
of these different strategies. Um, lots of counting going on, different types of things that students get to count, um, whether that's friends, snacks, toys, um, and then exploring other types of materials, having questions for them to answer. Awesome, thanks for sharing those ideas. Uh, lots of manipulatives. Great. All right, we have um, just under 10 minutes left and we're gonna spend some time sharing some resources with you. We won't have a ton of time to explore them. I just wanna make sure that they're shared and you're aware of them. And then hopefully you'll be able to dive into them more later. Um, so there are some additional videos. Um, this slide will be in the Google folder that has been shared with you. So you can watch the videos we've looked at and then there are a couple additional videos. Um, and let's just take a quick poll. How familiar are you with the new preschool math standards? So some new standards came out this year. Did you not know that there were new standards? Were you kind of familiar? Are you really familiar because you've worked with them? Let's just give you a second to um, respond there. All right, it looks like um, a lot of us are somewhat familiar, some of us are very familiar, and then a couple of us didn't really know that there were new standards, which is totally okay, because um, maybe there could be lots of reasons why you didn't know. Um, and then it looks like some of us are like pretty familiar, but um, could still use some more work on them. Um, so the standards are linked here. We won't really spend some time diving into them. Um, but just know that they are available on the State Board of Education website as well as on UEN. Um, so you can spend some time there diving into them. Um, also, um, we won't do that. There's also a resource called Math Strategies and Activities, um, which is also available on UEN. Um, there's the um, PDF to it. Um, so if you just want to take maybe just like one minute to scroll through and see like what are some ways that you think it could be useful. Thanks Jessica for that clarification in the chat box about the standards that they were approved in May. Um, and this school year is the implementation year, um, starting to get them ready and then full implementation will be expected this coming fall. Yeah, we have a lot of programs that, and we're doing all of our PD to kind of assist people in starting to utilize them, um, but you can still be using the old one, kind of phasing into the new ones throughout this school year, but um, by next school year, you should be fully into the new ones. Great, thanks for adding that clarification. Okay, all right. Um, anything, um, comments anybody would like to make about the strategies and activities resource? Like either a way that you could use it or something you found that looks useful. I was going to say, I just like how that has the standard and then it has what activities you can do along with it. So if you're looking for specific activities to meet a, a specific standard, then then this is a great place to go. Great. Awesome. OK, so it's going to go away from your screen for right now. But um, like I said, it is linked um, in the slides in your Google folder. So um, Hopefully it'll be something you'll be able to come back to and explore some more. Um, okay, here's an additional resource um, that lists, lists multiple types of resources. So there are some websites um, and some organizations that are dedicated specifically to early math. Um, and we just wanna let you know that they exist and that these are things that you can use. So some of them are 
um, research. Some of them are like modules that are professional learning for teachers. Um, some of them are like articles and videos. And some of them could be actual like lesson plans or tips and strategies. So there's a variety of things there. And um, the DREAM network is out of Stanford University and they've done some pretty extensive um, resource development in terms of early learning. So know that that's there. There's also the, um, the Erickson Early Math Collaborative that they, there are several links for them as well. They also have um, modules and materials. I would say that both um, the DREAM and the Erickson Institute are fairly similar, but the resources are a little different. Um, but they're like the two main organizations specifically dedicated to early math at that like birth to preschool to kindergarten grade one level. Um, learning trajectories is a great way to see like how um, students develop their thinking over time. Um, NACI has some specific math resources and there's a position statement from the National Council for Teachers of Math about the importance of early childhood learning math. And then some links are also listed for books. Um, so if you wanted to do a little bit more in-depth um, reading, there are a couple suggestions there related to early math, um, how children develop their thinking. Um, videos, the, the two videos that we have watched um, today are linked here in addition to a few additional videos that you can watch. Um, the teaching channel, it does require a subscription. You can register for free with your email address, but you only get three videos um, free and then it will start charging um, or you'll have to charge to see additional videos. So just kind of be aware of that about the teaching channel. Um, and then there's some actual research published just about the importance of early math and why it's so important to make sure we focus at that time. So um, just know that that's there. This is also linked, um, like a copy of it is in the folder with the bit.ly that Jessica just put in the chat box. Um, so we'll go ahead and just wrap up with one final reflection. Um, you can share one thing that you found interesting today or one resource that you intend to use. Um, go ahead and add that to the collaborative board. All right, it looks like lots of us want to try counting collections and then just using manipulatives and then some of the like specific resources that were shared. Um, all right, and um, thank you so much for your time. There's my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, appreciate you joining us and hope everyone has a great day. Thanks.